Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and in this video we're going to be discussing the color calibration module. It is part of the scene referred workflow which is the uh, recommended workflow in version 3.4 of Darktable and it's quite a powerful module so let's crack on. You can use this module to adjust the white balance what you could do in tandem with the white balance module that we've discussed previously or you can use it as a RGB mixer uh, which means uh, that you would be adjusting the output of the RGB channels based on their input and you can perform color grading by doing that or you can use it to adjust the color saturation and the brightness of the pixel based on their RGB channels and last but not least you can use it to produce a grayscale photo based on the RGB channels in this video we're going to be discussing the white balance in the chromatic adaptation transformation tab CAT and that's why we're using the same photo that I've used for the white balance video the main difference between using CAT for um, white balance and the white balance module is that the white balance is mainly concerned with the whites so if you use the white balance module you're trying to make sure that the whites are real whites well this module tries to make sure that all the surfaces in your image so all the colors are lit by the same illuminant one only works to make sure that the white looks good while this one works to make sure that all of the colors look good in your image now to use CAT we're gonna go first back to the white balance module and make sure we select D65 white balance which is in the set white balance to camera reference point then we go back to the color calibration and we can now use it to adjust the white balance if you set the chromatic adaptation workflow option in preferences processing auto apply chromatic adaptation defaults now it's legacy so it uses the white balance module if you change that to modern this will be done automatically for you for new photos now the white balance will be automatically set to camera reference and the color calibration module will be used to adjust the white balance another great addition is that the color calibration module can be used with masks while the white balance does not have any masks the white balance module works on the whole image while should you wish to the color calibration module can be used selectively on parts of the image all right so first we have adaptation drop down menu and that's the color space that the color calibration module will use to perform the chromatic adaptation transform and channel mixing the options are first none well that means that there will be no adaptation then we have linear Bradford and I'm going to quote the user manual directly here this is more accurate for illuminance close to daylight but produces out of gamut colors for more difficult illuminance that means if you're taking photo outside in sunlight then this one should work very well however if you're inside under tungsten or flash or uh, any other difficult illuminant then you might get out of gamut colors then we have the CAT 16 or CAT 16 and again from the manual this is more robust in avoiding imaginary colors while working with large gamut and saturated cyan and purple then we have the non-linear Bradford this can produce better results than the linear version but is unreliable and XYZ a simple scaling space scale by luminance Y 
This is generally not recommended except for testing and debugging purposes. All right. So do we need to remember all of those? I personally don't think so. We just need to know basically what they do. We don't need to use X, Y, Z. None is bypass. And you can start with the top one, the linear Bradford, if you're shooting outside, or try the others and see which one gives the better result. This is an outside photo. I'll leave it on linear Bradford. If the default settings do not work, just like for this image, you can see that it's too blue. Then you have four options in the CAT tab to set it manually. The first is using the color picker here, the pipette. And you use that to select a neutral color from the image. If you don't have a neutral color, so white, you can select the whole image And then in that case, the algorithm will find the average color and set the color as the element. Again, I'll quote from the manual. This method relies on a gray world assumption, which predicts that the average color of a natural scene will be neutral. This method does not work for artificial scenes. For example, these with painted surfaces. As you can tell, it did a good job here snow scenes are always difficult but you can select different neutral area or neutral color if you want to fine-tune it next we have AI detect from image edges From the manual, it uses a machine learning technique to detect the illuminant using the entire image. The algorithm finds the average gradient color over the edges found in the image and sets that color as the illuminant. This method relies on the gray edge assumption, which may fail if large chromatic aberrations are present. As with any edge detection method, it is sensitive to noise and poorly suited to high ISO images but it is very well suited to artificial scenes where no neutral colors are available. All right, so this is a uh, AI technique or artificial intelligence technique that detects the edges in the image and assumes that the edges should be neutral or gray. That might work for some images and might not work for others. According to the manual, it's great if you have an artificial scene with no neutral colors. So if you're taking a photo of a painting under lead lights or tungsten or what have you, then you might want to try it. Third option is detect from image surfaces. This one combines the two methods that we've already discussed. The manual says the algorithm finds the average color within the image given greater weight to areas where sharp details are found and colors are strongly correlated. This makes it more immune to noise than the edge variant and more immune to legitimate non-neutral surfaces than the naive average. But sharp colored textures like green grass are likely to make it fail. All right, so this one combines the other two, it has the advantage of the edge detection that we've just discussed, plus the looking at all of the surfaces to try to find a neutral color. Note that these two AIs worked much better in, let's say, normal photos that I've tried them on. I did select this one as I selected it for the white balance video because it's difficult just to push the module to the limit. And we're going to be using the color calibration module for white balance in the next showcase session. So stay tuned for that as well. Fourth option is to set it back to S-shot and camera. 
which restores to the camera defaults and reread the raw EXIF. The color patch that you see here is the currently calculated color of the illuminant. So what the color calibration modules think is that this scene has been illuminated by something that looked of this color. So light that had this color. And what it's trying to do is add color to this image to turn this color into white. If this is properly calculated, then when you turn off the color calibration module, the, the whole scene looks like it's been colored by this color. Next, we have CCT, and that's the Correlated Color Temperature Approximation. According to the manual again, this is the closest temperature in Kelvin to the illuminant currently in use. That's what you would usually set in white balance modules or in other software to set the white balance. Next to the temperature, you will have an option of three indications. You have daylight, black body, or invalid. If you're adjusting the white balance here and you get black body after manually adjusting it or daylight, then you've probably did the correct manipulation and you have a valid result. If you get invalid, then that's not correct. And unless you're doing it for some artistic reasons, then you should try another method of calculating the white balance. Next drop down box lets us choose the illuminant manually as well. You can choose same as pipeline, which means do not use CAT for white balance and it will rely on what you've done in the white balance module. Then you can choose one of the usual suspects that you get in white balance modules. Choose daylight, cadescent, and so on and so forth. After those, you have custom to either select it user using the color picker or manually by changing the hue and the chroma. As you can see, the other three we've already discussed. Then we have the temperature slider, which we can use it to adjust the color temperature of the calculated illuminant manually. We can move it to the right to assume a more blue illuminant. If you do that, then the image will become more red or warmer or you can move it to the left to do the opposite and assume a red illuminant and make the image more blue or cooler. The temperature slider is meant as a fine-tuning slider so it only appears when it makes sense when you're close to a uh, Planckian locus or when you're close to daylight or a black body and then you can adjust the temperature using this slider. Next we have the gamut compression slider. You can use this one to compress the gamut which means that you can try to recover some colors that have fallen out of the color gamut as part of the chromatic um, adaptation done by the color calibration module. I.e. if you have colors that have been clipped and you can see it, mostly that happens a lot with red for my camera you can try to use the gamut compression to recover some of those colors. And the last one is clip negative RGB from gamut. What that means is that any RGB values that are negative will be set to zero. And according to the manual again, this can help deal with bad black level as well as blue channel clipping issues that may occur with blue LED lights. It's enabled by default. I would leave it 
doesn't seem to produce any negative effects if it's not needed. Now the chromatic adaptation and the color calibration module makes assumptions about the earlier steps in the pipeline, such as what we've already discussed about the white balance. It assumes that the white balance should be set to camera reference. Now, if it's not, you're going to get an error message. And I'll let's see if we can do that. There you go. Now we have a error message next to the color calibration and next to the white balance where it says white balance applied twice because we've tried to do it in the white balance module and in the CAT tab of the color calibration. Of course to fix that just go back to camera reference. You'll get a similar error message if you try to create a second color calibration module and use it as well to perform white balance. Of course, if you prefer to use the white balance module for white balance, but you want to use the color calibration for channel mixing or any of the other uses that we're going to be discussing in future videos, then all you have to do is to set the chromatic adaptation tab to either bypass or set the illuminant to same as pipeline. And you can do the same for any other instances of the color calibration module that you create. All right, that's it for the chromatic adaptation tab. And we're going to discuss any, the other uses of the color calibration module in future videos. So stay tuned. If you have any uh, recommendations, questions or corrections, then please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.